It's me, the sun-soaked tropical hotel looking for a companion who enjoys short walks to sandy beaches and exotic bird sightings. My only weakness? You'll never want to leave me. Download the hotels app to find me, your perfect somewhere. Empire. The seat at the stadium shouldn't just be where you sit. Seeing that tag at 10 games and on the 11th, I'm going to give them this NFT that's good for blank. Or I'm going to give them a free one from every game that they go to and hopefully they increase the value. But yes, people are using them for perks, for physical perks, and also for just the perks of having the NFT itself. That's Cameron Fowler, founder of Digital Seat Media, where technology can help you get the most of your in-stadium experience. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein. We have talked to a lot of startups and technology companies that are helping teams turn the stadium into a multifaceted modern experience that has the game itself as its tentpole attraction. Some want you to navigate the venue better. Others think gaming and eventually gambling will entice you to come to the live event. But it all circles back to where your ticket has you parked. Our guest this week is Cameron Fowler. He's the founder of Digital Seat Media, which is providing teams, artists, brands, the ability to reach fans on any device without an app necessary. Let's talk about digital engagement and the modern stadium. Hi, Cameron. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Tell me a little bit about your company. What does Digital Seat Media do? Yeah, so at Digital Seat, we work with teams and venue owners in the sports and entertainment space. Uh, we go into the venue and we put what's called digital seat tags on the armrests or the bleachers of the venue. Um, and each tag has a QR code uh, that is uniquely programmed down to the individual seat level, which allows fans to open up their camera on their phone, scan that tag, and do various things like order food and drinks to their seat. Uh, check live game stats, look at the player roster, engage with sponsors, report an incident. Uh, we've got about 31 different modules uh, that they can choose from. Um, and you recently um, had a deal with the Utah Jazz in their stadium out in Salt Lake City. What can fans do if they're sitting in their seats using this? Yeah, so at uh, Utah, we have they have a great partnership with CoinZoom, who we've recently started working with. So fans are actually able to scan their tag, and they can do things like um, look at venue maps, which which makes sense, or look at uh, you know food and drink and, and order things like that. But also look at the latest NFT drops for the Utah Jets. So fans are able to scan that tag and look at those NFTs and purchase them uh, that are brought to them by CoinZoom. Very cool. All right, so l- let's talk about the future of this. What do teams want? What do fans want? What's the feedback you're getting as as all of this stuff is kind of coming into place here? Yeah, feedback that we're getting that's pretty consistent is uh, from the team and the sponsorship side is that one-to-one relationship with the fan. And for the past, you know, several decades, it's really been a hey, if I'm Mercedes Benz and I want to, I want to advertise inside of a, a general venue, then I have to run it on the jumbotron, and I hope that everybody sees. Well, in today's data-driven world, it is now more a, hey, I need to connect with that fan on a one-to-one level, and I need to present that offer just as my target audience. And so with Digital Seat, you're able to do that, and it's it's increasing sponsorship dollars for the teams that we work with. It's a very good uh, ROI for the actual brands that we work with because now they're able to say, look, I might not necessarily care about the people in the $500 seats for this campaign, but I do just want to talk to students or vice versa of that. And from the the fan side, it's really wanting that engaging content and that kind of gamification. I want to be able to scan that tag and play trivia and see my name up on the Jumbotron, but I also want to capitalize on the utility tools of it. I don't want to spend 15 minutes waiting in line to get a hot dog or a beer. I want to scan that and then have it brought to my seat in five minutes. And so that's really what where we kind of fit in. All right. So let's go through the concessions a little bit. Um, is that system in place where if I do order the hot dog, somebody will show up in five minutes or are we still working on that so far? Yeah. So there's several venues that we work with right now and several partners where we actually have that up and running. We've been doing that for about the past 18 months. And it's happening. Like I can literally count on that occurring. Or at least, well, yeah, it is absolutely yeah. correct. Okay. Absolutely correct, and it works really well because it makes it again easy for fans to just scan that tag on yeah. their armrest and go, "Hey, I'll do that um, any day," so that I don't miss the fourth quarter. 
Um, okay, on gaming, um, what do fans want there? I assume it's all free to play, right? So what are they looking for and what do they want there? Yeah, so we're having conversations. Obviously, uh, betting regulations are varied by state by state. It's something that I think everybody acknowledges is coming down the pipeline. Um, free to play is already here. So right now we've been doing a lot of gamification on our side of kind of things that we build custom in house of getting people and tying that into sponsors. Hey, if you guess this correctly, then this happens or, uh, things of that nature. But now we're really having much broader conversations across a lot of different, uh, partners that we have and saying, Hey, are you interested in free to play? And more specifically, are you interested in the actual gambling part? We think that there is absolutely going to be a day where you're sitting there and it's, hey, it's Saturday afternoon. I want to bet $20 that he's going to kick this field goal or he's going to miss it. We want you to be able to scan that tag. We want it to be very frictionless and for you to be able to do that because we work on the Amazon model. And I always tell people this, that Amazon didn't get as big as they were because they were the first people to figure out how to sell things online. That had already been around. But they're the ones that capitalize on the fact that we're lazy as human beings. And so (laughs) we want that one click button and we want it at our house the next day. And that's why digital feed exists the same way is because we're lazy. I don't want to get up and go wait in line. I don't want to have to download an app. I just want to scan something and do it right then. Uh, that, that's really, that's a heck of a tagline. And it's true. I love the honesty there. Um, the The reality is, I mean, as you know this, and, and as jurisdictions change throughout the country, there's a land grab for all of these different gambling operators to try to get you to download their app. And they're offering all sorts of inducements to, to make bets on that app legally, obviously. Um, but you're Correct. suggesting that even, even after all of that, that there's still going to be a segment of the population that isn't surfing it that way and would rather just do one click sitting at their seat. I think so. I think that you're going to see that there is, um, some, what, what some designated sports wagers that are inside the venues that go there and go, I'm going to place this bet while I'm here. Right. But then I think you're going to have what we call is impulse betters. Um, and I look at that the same way as we do a going into a convenience store or, or into a Walmart, for example. When I go in there, I'm not necessarily planning on buying a Dr. Pepper and Reese's. I went in there to get a milk. But when I'm standing there waiting in line, I'm like, well, fine. It's right in front of me. I might as well do it. And so I think that we're going to see that with betting along the same way is that there's going to be people that have that app on their phone. And there's going to be people that are in there in the moment that have ha- are having fun going, you know what? It's a good day. I bet that I can bet $20 and I'm going to win this. That's that's where we really think things are going to trend. Okay. Well, let me ask this then in, in regard to that specifically, but, but just to in general, um, what you're offering for teams, are you just offering a device that they can or a QR code or, or technology that they can then use with their own partners or are you bringing partners to them to work through the code itself? Um, we do both. So we are a hub and spoke model where we have digital seeds, the technology, where we go in and we install the tags. We have a stadium controller module uh, that we've built where then we're able to send content out to each individual tag or to the whole stadium or just to your season ticket holders. And we bring partners. We already have the ability. We, we provide live data. We provide live stats. We provide augmented reality. We have AR engineers in-house. Um, We provide mobile wallet options, but if there's a team that we work with that says, hey, look, we've already been doing this. We already have a trivia partner and we really like them. We say, great, we'll embed them in the platform. But we don't want people to have to reinvent the wheel. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Our proposal whenever we go to teams is, is to tell them, look, you can work with nine different vendors to do all this. You can work with a data vendor. You can work with a trivia vendor. You can work with a food delivery vendor, or you can work with digital seat and we'll do it all for you. So help us make your life easier. Um, and, and you don't have to get rid of the stuff that you already have. We can put it on the platform. For so, you. Okay. So it's all, so it's a la carte. Like we could do a full service thing for you, or you could come to us and say, we have this that's already working. And as long as the technology is married to one another, you can incorporate it. That is absolutely correct. Okay. Um, all right. On the gambling part of it, how do you kind of view that moving forward? All of these teams, all these leagues, are going to if they don't already have partnerships with specific groups. So how do you kind of manage that on the, on your end where you may have partners that clearly want to work with you? There's a conflict of interest there. How, how do you how do you see that and how do you navigate that? There is. We're agnostic, though. Um, you know, we, we don't mind those different brands and, and companies that are doing sports wagering, uh, depending on where they're at. And so I think we take that approach to where we're going and saying, look, if you already have a partner, We'll put them on the platform. Let us help you reach that right audience. So 
to date, these sponsorships have been, hey, put them on the Jumbotron and tell fans to download the blank app, download the FanDuel app, download the Caesars app, download DraftKings. With us, we are now taking the approach of, hey, I get, I think we all do, an email or a thing in the mail that says, hey, come to this casino, we'll give you $100 to gamble with. Yeah. Everybody gets them because they want to drive you there. In my opinion, it shouldn't be any different in sports. So it should be throwing on the Jumbotron and working with these gambling partners and saying, hey, give the first 100 fans that scan their tag $100 to wager with on that game that they're sitting at. You'll have 100% participation rate doing that. And then for the next 50, give them $50. Or you can do A-B testing. Half the stadium gets this, half gets that. And so if they don't have a partner in place, we have some suggestions of going, hey, these guys seem to be pretty progressive. You fit their audience. Or, hey, we already have a partner. We say, great, we'll put them on the platform. No problem. Let us work with them as far as marketing, though, so that they can use the power of digital seat and its flexibility from a platform perspective while also using their app and, and, and what they're trying to do. Skip the hassles of traffic aboard Amtrak. Go from city to city with ease as you enjoy no middle seats and plenty of legroom. Plus, with fewer carbon emissions than driving, you can travel with a clear conscience. So kick back, relax, and travel sustainably aboard Amtrak. Book in advance and save up to 50% at Amtrak.com. 21-day advanced purchase required. Blackout date supply. Subject to change in availability. In turn, obviously, um, teams and leagues are interested in modernizing the in-game experience. And we've talked about some of this stuff where betting is going to be part of it, where it is legal. Obviously, I'm sure fantasy falls into this. Gaming keeps people engaged. What else is there? What are they talking to you about that incentivizes people to enjoy the experience of going to a live game again? Um, yeah, we're having a it, conversations across the whole spectrum. It's really making it fun for fans. It is that peer-to-peer connection when you're sitting there, and it's, it's being, again, the gamification side of it and that sense of community when I'm there. So the ability to scan that tag and say, hey, I'm going to vote for the player of the game. And I can see those up on the Jumbotron in real time about who's winning this, who's losing this. Huh. Or, hey, the, we do a, what we call a, a fa- first fans to scan battle where it's, hey, everybody scans their tag in the sections that has the most wins this free, buy one, get one free from some big brand type deal. And everybody's like, hey, you know, hey, scan your tag, do this. Um, but they also are doing things like, you know, NFT drops where it's, hey, scan that tag get that NFT drop, then we really look at that too is there's a big utility function to that of, hey, if you're at this game and you download that NFT, then that gets you into the tailgate for the next game. But you got to have it. And so it's really, um, and then obviously augmented reality is a big one. So that's a, is the future of fan engagement as far as I'm concerned from just a, hey, having fun perspective, but also a brand awareness and a sales perspective. So the ability to scan that tag, view a jersey in AR and then buy it right there on the spot and have yeah. it delivered to your seat. Huh. Um, let me talk about the NFTs that you brought it up. Um, as you kind of view that marketplace, which is clearly exploding here, um, where do you see, I know it's a vague question, where, where do you see this going? So I see NFTs, yes, it is exploding and, and everybody's talking about them. It's a real um, you know, buzzword right now, and, and it absolutely has a, a, a place. I can see the day um, in the not too distant future at all, at least from digital seats perspective. We want fans that if I'm at this game for the first time and I'm there with my son, we've never been to a football game together, I want to be able to scan that tag and buy that NFT for that game only because it means something to me. Um, I want to be able to keep that. And same thing where if I'm there for Tom Brady's last touchdown pass, you know, 50 years from now, then <laughs> I want to be able to scan that tag and be able to say, I was at the game, I have the NFT, and it's validated, A, through the blockchain, but it's also tied right to the seat that I was in. Look at this. And I think people are going to go collect them. I think you're going to have people that go to uh, you know, every MLB stadium, every NFL stadium, and they collect NFTs from the games they were at for all of them. But then the biggest one is, is one that I touched on earlier, which is I see that it's going to be a utility token. I think that people are going to say, hey – Put it on the Jumbotron. Everybody bid for this NFT. There's only one. And this gets you into a suite for the rest of the season with five of your friends to be able to watch the game. Huh. Or this gets you to be able to call the play at the spring game or go to lunch with the coach. I think those are going to be a big thing. I think people are going to start using them for charity. Of Hey, I'm going to auction this off. 
50% of it goes to charity and you get to keep it. The other 50% goes to the school for scholarships. I think there's a lot of different utility around them. You know, we hear a lot of this from a lot of people that are in this space, including yourself. It sounds like more and more and more that teams are open-minded to a reward system. Um, and they've always kind of had something where they would, you know, it used to be they gave away a bobblehead or they gave away a shirt or they gave away a stick if you showed up. And there were offers that were sent to you for tickets. If you were a season ticket holder, you're given special things. Sounds like we're in a modern reward system. Is that a fair way to kind of put what's going on here right now? That is absolutely a fair way to look at it. Of Hey, I want to reward my fans if they, uh, again, from digital seats for scan that tag at 10 games and on the 11th I'm going to give them this NFT that's good for blank or I'm going to give them a free one from every game that they go to and hopefully they increase in value but yes people are using them for perks for physical perks and also for just the perks of having the NFT itself um when I scan the tag at one of the games take Utah where am I redirected to what what where does my phone go so we uh, build what's called a progressive web app so it's mobile first it works inside your browser on any any smartphone um, and it looks like an app and acts like an app. But you don't have to download a native app onto your device. And so you'll see a large, uh, you know, a screen with large format tiles on there that we call modules. You might see a screen that has five of them. You might see 10 of them. It depends on what our client is wanting to do. It depends on what the brands are wanting to do. But we are uh, visual learners on our side. So we want people to look at it and know whether they're eight or 80 to know exactly what it is they're supposed to do whenever they scan that tag and look at it. We don't want them having to dig around the rule on the platform is you should never be more than three taps away from where you're trying to get. Yeah. And, and like, as you're describing the experience here, a lot of people are going to use this for a lot of different reasons. I want to see where a shorter bathroom line is. I want to order food and I don't want to get up from my chair. I want to buy an NFT. I want to get a piece of merchandise, whatever it may be. And then there's offers kind of going, I would assume throughout the game for the various different things that we've kind of walked through. How do you navigate that? If something's popping up on a Jumbotron and they're saying, go to this now, how do you navigate the timing of all of that so that people are, to your point, lazily finding what they're looking for very quickly? (laughs) Yeah, we have different formats on the actual platform. So we can do what we call is a a platform presenting sponsor where if, you know, Alaska Airlines is a good partner of ours, where they want to take over the whole platform where the background image and the first module tile that you see is all Alaska Airlines, then they can do that. We also have um, different triggers based on different times in the game. So during halftime, as soon as the clock hits zero, then the software knows, hey, I need to now turn on this Starbucks module because they're the sponsor at halftime, and we know they're going to run it on the Jumbotron simultaneously. We also have what we call trigger options where we can we have a remote control where we can push out content to everybody's devices inside the venue. So it's kind of a complex dance, if you will, uh, when we work with these teams and with these brands, because a lot of the brands have different initiatives. So, hey, I don't, Pizza Hut's a great one. We work with Pizza Hut and they don't want to provide, there's certain offers, it's called the you, Sooners Win, You Win offer up at Oklahoma, um, where they it's locked until they know that the Sooners are going to win the game. And so there's just certain elements of that that we put in place where, hey, once we know the victory is secured, then we unlock that module and then they'll run it on the Jumbotron. So it just varies from venue to venue. Okay. Um, let let me talk about social um, uh, uh, engagement. Um, how do you kind of view that? Is that part of what you're trying to build here where you're maybe bringing chat rooms back? How, how are you kind of viewing social engagement? Yeah, so we've had some thoughts about can we do fan-to-fan chatting inside the venue? As we know, that can kind of get sticky whenever you've got some big rivalry games. I can only imagine what it looks like for, you know, Texas versus Oklahoma, which is down where we are. Um, That would, that would be interesting. And so it is something that we've talked about. If we can do a type of auto moderation, there's some partners that we're talking to out there as well um, to see if it would be a good fit. Um, There's also social components of, we can tie in things like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, obviously directly to the platform, allow people to share content from the platform on that. And then we have brands that we work with that actually will launch digital seats even on non-game days, the you know we got our start in sports, but we have other verticals that we're attacking as well. And so we have some brands that say, "Hey, I want to put the digital seat platform out on a Wednesday afternoon, just so fans on social can click on it and do what we want them to do on it." Okay. And how about sports bars? Um, are you heading in a retail type of situation or a hospitality situation where, in a modern sports bar, this could be utilized? 
So not yet. Um, we've had some inquisitions on our side about what it looks like. We were really trying to get our bearings uh, in sports. Obviously, navigating through a pandemic was, was just a blast for everyone. And so um, we were getting through that. And we are now having we, – we have tags that we do at, at large events that – They'll either they'll go on digital screens or they'll go on tables or chairs or, or they'll go on lanyards. We do them a lot on credentials so people can scan them whenever they walk in and it'll tell them the venue map about the venue, where things are. Um, and then, you know, sports bars is something that maybe down the road we'll look at approaching, uh, but it's not something that we're actively doing at the moment. Okay. Uh, Cameron Fowler is the founder of Digital Seat Media. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. On the next Future Sport Podcast. NFT and fantasy gaming merge in the uber forward thinking company, Sorare. Now, I think what's really important for us is there are a bunch of things that NFTs are. And there's a bunch of ways that you can play with NFTs and collect and buy and sell. Some are art, some are communities, some are kind of memorializing a moment, whatever it might be. They're all, those also aren't necessarily the same thing. The same way that if you open up your phone, your home screen is filled with a bunch of things that have a common name as an app, but are not common beyond that in some regards. That's Ryan Spoon, Chief Operating Officer at SoRare, which has taken fantasy gaming and collectibles to a logical and exciting new realm. That will do it for this episode. As always, the future is now. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein.